Hello, in this video we'll be covering the XML file source in Centerprise. The XML file source uh, is a Doit of data source, which means it's a source of data, in which case it is a reader, which will read records from a specific, uh, in this case, a XML file. Uh, and it also has ports here on the right for mapping. Here you can see that we've mapped uh, a few nodes from uh, down further down in the tree to a destination. Uh, and also it has a tree. In this case, it is a proper tree a hierarchical data structure as opposed to most data sources in Centerprise which are relatively flat in nature like this, like so here. Um, it reads records in a hierarchical format uh, which means that the tree will look slightly different than most trees in Centerprise. Uh, it, it'll start off with the just the root node which is represented by these this little blue icon of a square uh, and then sometimes it'll have a little below it you'll have a collection node represented by four boxes uh, stacked in a square like fashion. What this means is that this node is repeated uh, when it's read. So for example let's preview the data here and let's pin this here and you can see first of all that uh, we only have one thing in our data preview it's just just a single cell to actually see, and this is the root of the tree, to go further down and see what's underneath the root, click the expand icon so you can see uh, one level further. And here you can see where we do have three uh, records or three nodes, uh, three items underneath the root of the tree. Uh, also keep in mind that this is considered one record, so here you'll see in the preview total records equals one. So when we're dealing with hierarchical data, the whole record concept is, is kind of kind of weird. So uh, no, just keep in mind though that we have three uh, records here, or three items under the, the root, and that's why we have the, this represented with a collection node icon. Uh, and then further down you'll see that for shipping address we have the reference node icon, and this is represented with a box with a little shortcut uh, icon on it. What this means is that this has a one-to-one -one relationship to the object above it. So in this case, per for sales order, we have one shipping address. And if I expand the data preview here, scroll down slightly, or actually I don't scroll down, you can see that we have uh, exactly one shipping address for this sales order, because it wouldn't make sense to have multiple uh, shipping addresses per sales order. Uh, and then last, lastly in the tree, we have these little, um, these little element tags, these little yellow element tags. These are the actual elements uh, within the tree. So sometimes these will be actual attributes in the XML file or they'll be uh, elements within that don't repeat and just contain data depending on how your XML was formatted. Um, so here, if we take an example here, you can see that the ship to, street, city, region, postal code, and country, these are all uh, elements within the shipping address in this case. Uh, of this object and it, all the elements will always appear as columns in a particular row relating to the object. So in this case the, ship, the object is shipping address, you'll see that show up in the object path and then we have all of the elements appear as columns uh, in the grid and then the data for those elements uh, in the grid as well. Uh, notice also that we have one extra column here, this text column. This is for capturing data that's in between the XML uh, element tags. So for example, if I were to edit this file, and you can see uh, this is the actual XML file that we're reading, uh, sometimes you'll get data with, with an XML uh, object here, and between the object, uh, the end tag, you can have, uh, and this is perfectly legal, to have text in between the element tags, the XML element tags. Uh, anytime this happens, of course, you can see that this is an unnamed uh, unnamed text here. It's just the text value for this L XML element. So to capture that we have the uh, text column and, and you see that this shows up as an element text uh, in the tree anytime you're dealing with XML data. So which brings me to how this tree was formed in the first place. Uh, this tree is comes from the XML schema uh, basically telling us how to read the XML file. So for every time, every file you, you're going to read in Centerprise, uh, you'll require a schema. Depending on how that schema is formed, you'll get a different tree and different mapping capabilities from that tree. So to kind of show you an example of how to do that, let's go ahead and create, start from scratch with a, with a blank data flow. In this case we have a delimited file destination and I want to map to it from an XML source. So I'm going to go to the toolbox, 
look under the sources section and under the XML file source I'm going to drag and drop onto the diagram and right away you see that there's nothing here in this uh, this blank XML source so the first thing I'm going to have to do is configure it so I'm going to right click or double click and select properties and the first thing I need to do is uh, specify the file path and I can do that by clicking on this icon here to select the file and I'm going to select the standard orders XML file in this case with extension .xml click open uh, now I'm halfway there now I need to specify the schema for this file so I can do one of two things I can specify an existing schema in this case I'm looking for my standard orders XSD or I can generate a new schema by selecting the generate button this is only use this in the case if you do not have an existing schema so I'm going to click generate and I want to say standard orders generated dot xsd save it uh, and now if I click the next button you can see that I have the um, you can see that I have the tree structure as a preview to see what at what the what my actual schema looks like in Centerprise and here you can see that I have that same exact tree structure that I showed you in the previous example so once I'm satisfied I can click OK and if I expand the source icon now or the source XML action you can see that I have that tree in my uh, layout here so I'm gonna make this a little wider to work with uh, and then I can map from the source to the destination so uh, to map uh, keep in mind that where you map from matters in this in this example when you're dealing with XML source so I'm gonna go to the line items and find this order item collection again this is a collection because we have the collection icon here and I want to for every order item I want to create a record that will be show up as a record in my delimited file destination so I'm just going to go ahead and auto map here uh, and here you'll see that I have the mapping already set up for me so if I preview the data here you can see that I have the uh, I have a bunch of uh, items here so keep in mind that depending on where you map from matters and the anchor changes now the anchor is the point that we will create a record in the data flow so in this case it's anchored to the order item so for every single order item no matter where it is in the XML file we are creating a record that will be written to the delimited file destination so to illustrate this a little better I'm gonna show you another example where we are taking an XML file and mapping it to another XML file in this case with an identical schema so first of all let's take let's remove everything all the maps and let's just map from the top to the top. So what, when we do that, and let's go ahead and run this, and let's click on this file which will allow us to see it in the editor, you can see that we have three records and that was because if you remember we only had three items or three sales orders in our XML file, in our source XML file. So if I go though and let's change, let's start mapping a little further down the tree, let's take uh, from order item let's take and map it to uh, let's, let's map price to total sales amount in this case so I'm going to take this and map it and now let's see what happens to the, our output here so remember we have uh, in this example we have we had three elements before so now let's go ahead and let's see what we have now so now you can see that I have a lot more elements than three. It's still sales order is the node, but now we have information from the, uh, in this case, the order item as well as the sales order. So now we have a record for every single order that we mapped, uh, order item I should say that we mapped from the source. So in this case, when we first, when we did not have this mapped, our anchor was the sales order. Now that we did map further down the tree, the anchor is now the order item. And in general, the, the anchor will be computed by the lowest collection node that you have in the tree. And then that anchor will encompass all the way up to consider it a record. So in this case, the, my record consists of the order item all the way up to wherever the information that I need to, to get in order to get this, uh, in this case, the order date. And that'll constitute one record. So again, for example, let's take, um, let's take in this case, shipping address now and let's say I want to map shipping address and I let's map this ship to ship to 
So now, again, my anchor is still order item, but it's going to go all the way up and construct the subtree, the, the, the lowest subtree uh, that I can get in order to construct one record to display all this information. So let's go ahead and run this again. And let's go ahead and close this and open it again. So here now you can see that I have the sales order shipping address, sales order, in this case there was no shipping address, sales order shipping address, uh, sales order shipping address. And this is because, and notice that we have this subtree for all of them, all of the ones that do have a shipping address. Some of them were blank, and that's why they don't have the shipping address. But for all of these, we have the entire subtree as the record, as a driving force for this data. Um, and once you've got the anchors down, you should be able, you should have no problem being able to map from an XML file in Centerprise. Thank you very much.